Implementing a loading spinner for your application is fairly easy. The usual approach will be injecting a loading service on each Angular services and then start the spinner every time a call is made and stop the spinner when uh, your service call is completed like so you will be adding your spinner manually here so it'll be like start the spinner and you'll be ending your spinner after your uh, call gets completed we are going to do things differently here we will implement a common loading spinner service for an entire app so if you're going to use your api from any of these components i mean any components in your application the spinner gets triggered and uh, as a common service and then you'll be seeing a spinner action going on here and for this tutorial i created a, created a node.js service and started listening to an api which is just a simple sample test URL and that doesn't uh, give a response, a proper response. It'll just give a true or true or just an empty object. Okay, so it doesn't make uh, matters for us because uh, all we need is just delay the API for like a few seconds and to show the spinner bouncing around and then we are done with it. For this to work, we need three parts uh, in our application. So the first part is the spinner component. We need to create a component for our spinner and then we need, we need to have a service for our uh, spinner. And finally, we need HTTP interceptor for our spinner to get triggered. So this is where we'll be triggering our spinner component, I mean spinner service, and that in turn uh, show up the spinner and uh, disables the spinner like so. And we already have uh, HTTP interceptor in our app. To learn more about HTTP Interceptor, I will add a link to the tutorial in the description below. Please have a look because I will be I I have talked more about that uh, in that tutorial. Okay, so that covers um, um, deeply about uh, catching an error globally and things like that. All right, so let's get started with creating our spinner component. For that, we need ngGC and spinner. So that will create a component component for us. So it'll be in, yeah, it just created here. It will be just under our app folder. So we have spinner component, style sheet, and the component file. Right now, uh, you can restructure your app files properly. Like you can just regroup. You can create something called core. And you can just drag and, I mean, you can just create inside the core and keep Keep your uh, components, keep your uh, commonly used components organized by this way because um, you know when the application grows larger, it'll be really difficult to maintain to uh, to have an eyeball like which is where and what is happening, things like. Okay, okay. For now, you know, let's ignore this part because that's not under our scope. Let's just focus only on spinner. Now, in the spinner, first thing what I'll do is um, I'll go to the HTML. Now before that, I'll let this be right there. I'll go to the component and you need to add your spinner at the very last uh, bottom of the line. So it will be app spinner. So that means you're saying that your spinner is uh, will be available throughout your app. Okay, so when you see look at your app, it's available over there. Now we need to go inside the spinner component and do all of our dirty works there. So I'll just drag the spinner part here. Now we can paint up our HTML. I already have a prefabricated code and I will drop a link for a GitHub where you can uh, have a reference uh, of this code, this particular code like spinner and spinner class because that's going to be quite an animation uh, which you'll be seeing because uh, it involves CSS and other bits, CSS animation. Uh, and yeah, we have a page overlay wrapper and we need to apply CSS for that. So I do have a prefab uh, code for uh, CSS as well. I'm just gonna copy and paste from my sample. Okay, so immediately you, you will notice our application is, has come alive and it, it is just there you know that there, there is no triggering of start or you're going to stop nothing is happening it is just there because we just added our spinner to our main app component and it'll it'll just stay there you can't do anything uh, at all so we need to tell our app component tell our spinner to go off and on when it's needed okay so this part is done let's close this one and 
yeah we will be coming back to this later now in our the next part will be we need to create a service for our spinner so that could be ngGS spinner slash spinner now this will create a service for our our spinner component so that will be this in the spinner component we need to keep track of um, uh, two main things uh, one is the count and the other one is the the, the event that uh, we are going to trigger so count will be starting from zero and the the trigger part will be either it's a string either a start or stop so that uh, trigger part the trigger the, the event that we are triggering will be of uh, uh, will be of an observable so basically a behavior subject so let's get started on this define a private field called count equals zero and we need to have a spinner observable, observable new behavior subject and the subject is of type uh, string so we leave the constructor as it is so so we need to export we need to not export we need to expose the spinner to our spinner component for that we need to define a get spinner observer so we can't just uh, expose the private um, private field in a class to another class right so for that purpose we'll be doing this observable of a string and return spinner dot as observable okay so as I said in my earlier tutorial that um, doing this is a best practice so you should make sure that you do you return your observable like this okay so that you won't expose your uh, um, field in a class private field in a class to another class unnecessarily right and then so whenever an API gets triggered is started okay when you're going to initiate an API call let's call them as request started and the request started will host will check if this dot count triple equals one okay so what we are saying is the count is initially zero and we are raising that up to one you know you can have your your method your way of uh, i mean incrementing your count and then checking it for one you know you can do whichever fashion you want we just wanted to know that whether and um, the uh, I mean the API service has started and we need to keep this uh, count to be I mean keep this spinner to be showing in our screen so that's the whole point so you can come up with your own logic if you like but uh, this is the one I'm uh, currently sticking with so we are sending a start event from our uh, I mean we are triggering a, uh, sp a sp an event with a start string so this will be made use when we are going to subscribe them in our spinner component okay so I think you might by this time you might have got the whole point of what I'm trying to do here and then request ended when you're when you get the when you get an HTTP response completed right so this will be if this to count triple equals zero or count zero so here we're gonna say okay this dot spinner dot next stop right so this will do now for request start we have a we are going to emit start and then for request ended we'll do a stop okay so we, we are going to watch on these two strings so that's there and finally request ended oh hang on a second request start request ended i think we need to have some reset spinner yeah in case if there is an error or uh, you know some calamity has happened in your application you know you need some sort of a fallback to revert back to a previous state okay 
so the spinner will emit a stop event right so our service class is completed so this is pretty much everything so when uh, when you when an api is getting started we need to trigger this when it's going to end we need to trigger this i mean we'll be calling this and finally if there is anything there i think we will we won't be using it but you know let's just keep it for uh, future purposes okay so once this is done now we can straight move to our component file in the component right we need um we need to first we need to define to hide or show this um the spinner so for this for this we need to have show spinner equals false okay so the default will be false which means we don't need to show by default and now what i'm going to do is i will set this here as a if condition so that will be ng if and we're going to show spinner or not okay so it disappears because the default is false now let's listen to our subscription or the observer observable okay so for this uh, let's extend in uh, in our constructor we need to inject our spinner class so that will be private spinner service in a service and let's have a init method not this on any let's have init method and let's define that init here okay and one more uh, one more thing we needed which is uh, private cd ref change detection ref yeah okay so in the init we are going to listen here right so that will be spinner service dot get spinner as observable so you have your uh, you you set up your uh, get spinner observer right so you're returning our observable here and we are making use of it over here all right now we will be subscribing to them so that'll be subscribe and obviously the status of our spinner okay now we have everything set so we'll be receiving our status start or stop whenever uh, whenever a trigger has happened like uh, an api call has happened and we're going to make use of that status over here so that will be this dot show spinner equals status equals equals start so only in case of uh, status start this will turn into true and then we're going to show our spinner over here okay now now we are good now the last piece of the puzzle is the HTTP interceptor now let's close this one up oh yes I forgot one more thing we need to add a change detector over here and detect changes because in some comp components an api call um, may not impact a change may not run a change detection cycle so in that case we need to um, manually trigger them okay so we need to first trigger a service Let's go to the API uh, interceptor and here we need to draw a constructor. So constructor of private spinner service. And finally, so in the intercept part, okay, whatever application or whatever API that is called, we need to just go ahead and trigger our request, request started. And so this part gets triggered and we need to find a way where we can stop the uh, spinner. 
So once it moves to the handler, when the control moves to the handler, and this part is where we will be receiving our response. So we are safe to we safe to say that we can close our spinner here. Request ended, and also we can come over here before anything happens. Okay, we can have request um, reset spinner. All right, so once we're done with everything, we are hit with a snag, which is a show spinner of null, something to do with the observable, which is uh, with the change detection cycle. Now, to overcome this, first mistake I've done is adding a init, uh, calling the calling init inside constructor. So moving them into a ng on init, it will be in a proper uh, lifecycle hook now things will be all right so when you're going to make assume that you're going to make a an api call through refresh or something you know we got our bouncing b back all right so we have a fully functional spinner that works for any api service calls from any component that is made so if you're going to use your uh, if you're going to use api service um, from any of the components let's say from this component or from ab, AB component or even component your spinner will get triggered because you're using it in an you're intercepting your uh, api call and then you're calling it from there so it is basically global i mean there are some room for uh, improvements so we can add more animation and smooth transition uh, so far it's not that smooth um, when it is appearing or disappearing you know the transition is not really good so we can uh, improve that and in some cases we don't need the spinner at all for example um, you may have a notepad in your application like the one in the google docs wherein you just keep typing and then uh, you don't want while you're typing you know it's doing an auto save you don't want that uh, uh, spinner to interrupt your workflow okay so to overcome that uh, what you can do is uh, you can list down all your uh, urls uh, you will be doing that uh, in a, in your application like you will be having an array of uh, API URLs and from there you will be calling inside your services so you can have a flag saying that show spinner yes or I mean true or false in that way you will be showing spinner only for the cases where you need it okay so this is one thing and um, so basically whitelisting your API calls so once again thank you for watching my tutorial and please do share your uh, suggestions and do not forget to share with your friends see you again bye